Hey, it's Dan Phoenix here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you many different reasons as to why you may not be losing weight on a carnival diet, or you may be someone who is not losing weight very easily on a carnival diet. Unlike what people will tell you time and time again, that the carnival diet is one of the best diets for weight loss, which I am one of these people that says that. But yes, there is many people that do get amazing weight loss results time and time again. I will not deny that what so ever because it is a very high protein diet that excludes normally all carbohydrates it keeps your insulin low your blood sugar levels low and it induces a lot of other changes within the body that help people maximize weight loss results and get them in the quickest time period that they possibly can get them in but this is not the case for everyone and before i go on to the reasons as to why you may be having this issue on the carnival diet i first want to say if you're someone that is having some animal-based carb sources such as raw honey or raw milk on the carnival diet then that could be preventing you from losing weight as effectively and efficiently as possible so if you got them on the carnival diet that you're eating you're having them on a regular basis i would recommend excluding them for a period of time and seeing if you then start to lose weight a lot easier and what will happen is when someone actually switches to a carnival diet initially due to them cutting out the carbohydrates which if they're having no raw honey or raw milk then they're going to be on a zero carb carnivore diet you will initially lose a lot of muscle glycogen and water weight which normally will happen within the first week or so so then in that period of time you will get a significant amount of weight loss but then a lot of people after that initial weight loss happens they find that their weight loss can be stalled and then they find it hard to continue losing weight so now on to the video with all the different reasons. So I'm gonna list off all the different things that I'm gonna be talking about. Not everyone's gonna agree with me, but I'm someone that knows a lot of information on weight loss. I've interviewed a lot of people that have got amazing weight loss benefits on a carnival diet, also people that have gained excess fat on a carnivore diet. And I've just done so much research on weight loss for years and years and years, so I'm very knowledgeable on weight loss and helping people get amazing weight loss results. So first off, eating too much fat, and something that you will know of if you've been on a carnival diet for some time or you've researched into it, you're gonna get on one soon, is people tell you time and time again that you need to make sure that you're eating enough fat on a carnival diet to feel as good as possible. Because they say that a lot of people that fail on a carnival diet because they're not feeling good, it is because they were not eating enough fat. Which I can tell you, for people that need to lose weight and for people that maybe find it easier to put on excess fat, this is not always the best advice to give them. And I'll make a great example. My good friend Daniel, who is literally my best friend that I spend the most time around, he's a fat loss coach and he's helped so many people lose weight on a carnivore diet and many other diets as well, is his dad was morbidly obese. He switched to a carnivore diet got some weight loss results, but then he found that he couldn't continue to lose weight. And he was eating a lot of fat on the carnivore diet. So due to this happening, they started thinking like, why is this going on? And then they switched him to a super high protein carnivore diet with a lot lower fat. And then he started getting very rapid weight loss benefits that had happened months ago, because he made this switch months ago, and he's continued to still get the weight loss results consistently so for him it was not a good idea to be eating a lot of fat and there was a lot of ex-vegans that i'd interviewed that switched to a carnival diet many months ago and three of the females found when they're on a carnival diet they went super high fat and guess what happened to them especially when they're eating multiple meals that were high fat carnivore diet meals they started to gain excess weight more weight than they'd ever gained in their life so there's definitely something to this which this is going to bring me on to the next thing so why is that happening for them well for them and their own personal experience and what daniel said to me as well from his own personal experience which he was on a raw carnival diet for a year and then switched to a cooked carnival diet for another year after that is that he found that he could just eat way more calories when eating a higher fat carnivore diet he found he wouldn't get as satiated from it but when he upped the protein and lowered the fat he became way more satiated for a longer period of time 
wouldn't need as much food within one sitting. And then guess what that does? It makes you eat a lot less calories. So you're gonna more than likely, due to not eating so much fat and a lot more protein, end up with being in a calorie deficit, which a calorie deficit is where you're eating less calories than you are burning within a day. And guess what happens when that goes on? Your body will start to burn its own body fat as fuel. And I know I'm gonna get many carnival dieters because they've done this before, say, oh, that's a load of garbage, calories in, calories out, that's just completely debunked, it's a load of myth. But do you know what I've stated to that? Complete baloney. I do not believe you in any way, shape or form because I've seen so many people on many different diets, not just the carnival diet, when they actually get on a diet that is in enough of a calorie deficit for them and they're actually tracking all of their food intake and inputting it on a calorie counter website such as Chronometer, they do get weight loss results that they sustain over a long period of time. But there's so many people that say, oh, well, that didn't work for me. And it's like, well, most of them, when I asked them, did you actually track all of everything you was eating and weighing it and putting it in on a calorie counter online? They're like, no, I didn't do that. And most of the people that say this as well, they don't actually have lots of experience with helping people lose weight. So to those people, I say, I'm not going to listen to you whatsoever, even if you don't believe me and say that in the comment section down below. And one name I actually wanna mention with the eating too much fat is Dr. Sean Baker. He, many, many months ago, wanted to, to reduce his body fat percentage a lot. So he went from having a super high fat carnival diet to a super high protein diet on the carnival diet with a lot lower fat. And guess what he was finding? That he was starting to lose a lot of water weight over a period of time and also body fat. And he wasn't someone that was even obese at all whatsoever. And there's just so many other people that I could list off time and time again that have found the same thing as well. And also a fix for this can be intermittent fasting. People that seem to eat one meal a day or two meals a day seem to find it a lot harder to gain excess body fat because when you are reducing your meal frequency, for a lot of people, it's just harder to eat as many calories within a meal and throughout the whole day. Now to the next thing, which you may just have certain hormonal imbalances going on. And the tendency with people that put on water weight and excess body fat, they tend to have high estrogen, low testosterone, low DHEA, and they tend to have many other hormones that are not in the optimal range whatsoever. And guess what happens when they're not in the optimal range and they are actually low? It has a negative effect on your metabolism. And guess what? For me, all of my hormones are in the optimal range. They're not within the reference range because you could be on the low end of the reference range and you're actually having that your hormone actually producing very low levels and it's actually not good whatsoever. You wanna find out what the optimal range is for every hormone that is produced within the body. So the more your hormones are messed up, the more your metabolism is messed up and the lower your calorie intake is going to have to be. So for me, because mine aren't messed up, I don't have to be in a massive calorie deficit whatsoever to stay very, very lean. So with this one, if you wanna find out what is going on with your hormones, go to a lab or a doctor or a hospital and request all of the different hormone tests that you can get. And trust me, there's many different hormones and this can actually come to quite a bit of money. I did this quite some time ago in Thailand and certain ones they rarely ever test for and certain ones just cost a lot more than others. And not everyone's gonna be able to afford this. If you can do it, then do it. I'll put a quick image here that shows all the different hormones that you can get tested for. And you really wanna work out what the optimal range. As I said, you could be in the reference range and think that you've got adequate amounts of certain hormones being produced when you have not. And it is just well known, for example, in the pro bodybuilding movement, when people take exogenous testosterone and they don't take what is known as aromatized inhibitor because when you take testosterone it actually makes estrogen levels go up really high and guess what happens when they don't take an aromatized inhibitor which stops the estrogen levels from going really high they end up gaining a lot of water weight and they gain fat so this is just a great example of where it happens with people in that type of bodybuilding movement. And yeah, you don't have to be a bodybuilder, but that's just a great example of what can happen when your hormones are not optimal. This is why most people, when they're a lot younger, they tend to be a lot leaner and get fatter later in life. Because for most people, when 
they are younger, their hormone production is a lot optimal. And as they start to get like to their 20s or their 25s or even over 30 and onwards, the hormone levels of everything just go down and down and down and down and down. And then the weight goes up and up and up and up and up. And now to the second to last reason. You may be someone that has your thyroid actually not producing enough T3, T4 and TS. H, but more specifically, the T3 is the one that even causes more of an issue with weight gain. And this has been seen time and time again. You can do research up online about this. It's very known in the scientific world on this type of specific subject. And with doctors, they know this as well, is that yes, when you don't have adequate amounts of T3, you will gain water weight and you will gain fat. It's really that simple. And again, pro bodybuilders, what do they do? when they want to lose as much fat as possible, there's many things to do. They go on a calorie deficit, they do more cardio and so on. But they also take synthetic T3. I don't recommend this at all. It has many side effects and it's not addressing the root cause of the issue. We're not having enough T3 being produced naturally. But yes, when they take adequate amounts of T3 in an exogenous form, they start to lose water weight and body fat really rapidly. Because guess what? It ramps up your metabolism like crazy. But also you want to get your T4 and TSH in the optimal ranges as well, because there's also scientific research and also information that you can look online that just really points to when you haven't got all of these thyroid hormones in check, you're going to find it a lot harder to lose weight. So again, if they're not being produced in the optimal range, you're gonna to have to be even in more of a calorie deficit. So this is what I'm saying, when people say a calorie deficit didn't work for me, well, you probably had certain issues going on with your thyroid hormones or your body hormones where you actually needed to be in way more of a calorie deficit than you was to actually lose the weight that you wanted to lose. And last but not least, not exercising or overtraining, which the first one I'm gonna focus upon is overtraining. If you are someone that is exercising so much on a regular basis, and you are just pushing yourself time and time and time again, where it's just way too much of your body, where it cannot sustain it and cannot recover from it fully, which there's so many people in the Western world that are fitness addicts. I love to work out, but over the years I've learned how to not burn myself out. Because if you are overtraining on a regular basis and your body's not recovering, guess what? It messes up your thyroid hormone production. It's gonna mess up things like testosterone and estrogen levels. It just has a whole next effect on your endocrine system, your adrenals. It just messes up everything in your body like absolute crazy. So if you're one of these types of people, you need to cut back on working out and if you're on the very extreme end where you've been doing it for so long and you're really burnt out then you need to stop completely for a period of time to let your body recover and do things consistently you need to to help your body fully regenerate and i've seen this with people time and time again on many different diets not just a carnivore diet and then on to the part you may not be exercising enough with exercising yes you can lose weight without exercising on a carnival diet or any diet for that matter of fact. But when you are exercising consistently on a regular basis with a type of exercise regime that you enjoy and that you can sustain over a long period of time, it's making you burn more calories. So then it will help you be in more of a calorie. And the more calories you burn within the day, the quicker you're gonna get weight loss results on the carnivore diet. So this is something to be aware of. And yes, you can just sit around on a carnivore diet and not exercise, but you're definitely not gonna get the weight loss results as quickly as someone that's exercising. Unless you're just in such an extreme calorie restriction, which is actually gonna be hard to sustain. It's gonna make your hunger all over the show and you're probably gonna binge on foods that are not ideal to be on the carnival diet because they're not carnival diet foets. And it's just a whole mishmash and you do this like yo-yo dieting, which so many people do with so many different types of diets. And actually I'm gonna give you one extra thing. I'm only gonna talk about this briefly, and that is your sleep may not be in point. If you're going to bed really late every evening or on a regular basis, you're not sleeping enough or you're not having enough quality sleep, that is gonna impair you on your own weight loss journey. You can do research up online on this. This is known on so many different websites that you can do your own research on. So many people talk about this like, yeah, there's a lot of people that know a lot on this subject. So I'm not gonna talk about the ins and outs in it, but you can do your own research up online on this. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. And make sure you do click that subscribe button. A high percentage of you, I would say the majority of you watching my videos are not subscribed. Make sure you click it, come on, click it. Thank you very much and click the bell. Otherwise you'll not be notified of when those new videos are uploaded. So as always, stay happy, stay healthy and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.